Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here, going over two basic properties of indefinite integrals. Our first property we want to talk about is the sum and difference rule. You're probably pretty familiar with something like this by now in calculus. This idea basically just says that we can integrate one term at a time if we have the antiderivative of a term plus minus another term, and even if we have a bunch of terms. This is a similar property that we have. When we're doing sums of things, we can evaluate sums one term at a time and then add and subtract the terms. We can do limits one term at a time, and we can also take derivatives one term at a time as well. So this is probably pretty intuitive when you're looking at the integral of something that has more than one term. Let's look at some examples. We have the integral of x squared plus x to the 4, all with respect to x. So just doing this one term at a time, both of these are power rules. The antiderivative of x squared, we would add 1 to the power and divide by the new power, so we get x cubed over 3 for the first term. Plus says we'll go ahead and add, and then do the antiderivative of the next term. So x to the 4 is a power rule also. Power will go up by 1, and we'll divide by the new power. So we get x to the 5 over 5. Don't forget your plus c, your constant of integration there. And that's our answer for the first one. Looking at our second one here, the antiderivative of e to the x minus x with respect to x. So we say, what is the antiderivative of e to the x? That's e to the x itself. And minus x, so we say minus, and then evaluate the antiderivative of x. This is like x to the 1, so this is a power rule. The power goes up by 1. x squared, and we divide by that new power, so we get over 2. So we get e to the x minus x squared over 2 of course, plus our constant of integration. Looking at the last one here, we have the antiderivative of x to the fifth plus x cubed minus 2. With respect to x, so we'll go ahead and do power rule for the first one, x to the 5. We will add 1 to the power. We get x to the 6. Divide by the new power, says over 6, plus, so now we'll do the x cubed term, adding 1 to the power there for the power rule gives x to the 4. Divide by the new power gives us over 4. And then what gives us a derivative of negative 2? While well, thinking about adding 1 to the power here, we would have negative 2x to the 1 dividing by 1, of course, with our power rule. Doesn't change anything if we divide by 1, and we get plus c, and that's our answer for this last one. Another property for indefinite integrals we just want to make sure you're aware of is the constant multiple rule. This property here just says that we can factor out constant multiples outside of the antiderivative and calculate the antiderivative without the constant multiple attached and then multiply it back in at the end. This is a similar property that we have for sums. You can bump a constant multiple out of a sum. For limits, you can bump a constant multiple out. And also for derivatives, we can do the same thing. So we just have a constant multiple rule that we're probably very used to by now in calculus. It also applies to indefinite integrals. Let's look at some examples here. We have the integral of 3x dx instead of just x dx. So that's a constant multiple of 3. That's the same as saying 3 times the integral of x dx. Now the integral of x dx, this is just a power rule if we think of this like x to the 1, right? So we'll keep our 3. We'll get the power going up by 1, which would be x squared. Dividing by the new power would give us over 2. We'll add our c in there. So we'll actually get 3 halves because of the constant multiple of 3, x squared plus our constant. Or the next one here, the integral of 5e e to the x dx, so that would be the same as thinking 5 on the outside and just thinking of the integral of e to the x dx, which we should know is a pretty easy rule, right? So this would just be 5 times antiderivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x itself. Put our plus c out there. And then we'll go ahead and leave off the parentheses and make this look a little nicer. We'll say 5 e to the x plus c for this one. Looking at our last one, we have the integral of 4 over x dx. We can read this the same as 4 times the integral 1 over x dx. You might also see an occasion where people like to write the dx on top of the fraction instead of beside it. So you might see 4 times the integral of dx over x. All three of these things are the exact same integral. And we think about what is the antiderivative of 1 over x. So we'll get 4 times, remember that rule is ln of absolute value x, plus our constant. 
And so we'll just write our four there without the parentheses. We'll say four ln absolute value of x plus c for this one. Let's look at our last three examples. Now these are combinations. We have multiple terms and we have some constant multiples. So we're just going to go one term at a time and evaluate these using both of the rules together. Now instead of factoring out something in front of the integral, because these aren't all divisible by the same thing, I'm just going to go one term at a time and keep my constant multiple attached to my antiderivative. So this first one here, I'm going to keep the six, keep the constant multiple. The antiderivative of x squared would be a power rule. So that says the power goes up by one and we'll divide by our new power, right? So we'll do some reducing there later. We have minus, so we'll say minus, and then we have our nine, so we keep the constant multiple of nine. Think of this like x to the one. So we have a power rule here, power goes up by one, x squared, dividing by the new power will give us over two. Plus eight, so we say plus, and what's the antiderivative of eight? It's going to be eight x, right? plus our constant, and so we'll go ahead and clean this up a bit. We'll say six divided by three, that actually gives us two x cubed there. This doesn't reduce, so we'll say nine halves, x squared plus eight x plus our constant. Looking at this next one here, we have the antiderivative of e to the x over three plus one over two x dx. So in this first one, we really want to see this over three as a one third. So I'll think keep the constant multiple of one third, What's the antiderivative of e to the x? Well, it's just e to the x. We have plus there, so plus. Next one here, I might want to see this one over two x as one half times one over x, right? So this two on the bottom is really a half constant multiple. So let's keep our constant multiple of a half. The antiderivative of one over x is going to be ln absolute value x. And then we would have plus our c. I guess there's not really much to fix here, but we'll go ahead and write it without my little multiply symbols. So one third e to the x plus one half ln absolute value of x plus c. Looking at our last one here, it's a little bit of trig. We've got the antiderivative of two cosine x minus four secant squared x dx. So first one, we'll keep our constant multiple of two. So say two times our antiderivative of cosine x would be sine x. So we'll go ahead and say two sine x for this one. Minus before the next term, keep our constant multiple of four. And the antiderivative of secant squared x, that is tangent x, right? Because tangent x has a derivative of secant squared x. And that's our last term. So we say plus c, constant of integration. And we're finished with that. Okay, everybody, good luck with your constant multiples. Take it one term at a time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.